Are you okay? Stitch, heads up! What's your favorite Lilo and Stitch moment from their 15 plus years in Disney movies and TV shows? Would you say it's the time that Stitch had to defend his town from a giant Christmas tree monster? I destroy or when he and his crew decided to visit Disney World. <laughs> or maybe the time that Stitch was sent into deep space warfare. I'm a journalist, don't shoot! <laughs> and if you're wondering why none of these moments sound familiar, well, that's because they're all from the Japanese anime that never fully aired in the US. Gambare Stitching! But why would Disney go through all the trouble of making an animated series with one of their popular characters, only to limit it to a handful of countries? And what's the heartbreaking reason that Lilo isn't even included? Well, we're about to find out as we explore Disney's secret Japanese Stitch series and discover how you can still watch it. Legally. I'm, I'm pretty sure this is all legal. Well, I don't remember you. <laughs> you sure you were in Finding Nemo? Gantu, what are you doing, you tetherhead? One of the mice from Cinderella! Lilo and Stitch. Is there a better example of everything that was both right and wrong with Disney in the early 2000s? No, there is not. Nestled comfortably in between a handful of super expensive technological big bets and painfully cheap direct-to-video cash grabs is this traditionally animated, non-traditional story about a little Hawaiian girl named Lilo and her encounter with a chaotic runaway alien creature named Stitch. But with such a simple setup, the film was able to masterfully weave in themes of abandonment, belonging, grief, and family. Oh, Hannah. Right. All of this was pretty impressive when you consider what was passing for depth in some of the other Disney movies around that time. You should have thought of that before you stole from me. But I was only six years old. And you were starving. And it was only a few coins. <laughs> and not surprisingly, both critics and audiences responded, resulting in a worldwide box office that more than tripled its original budget. And if there's one thing the Disney marketing machine understands, it's that a high quality movie plus a healthy amount of profit equals franchise, baby. And so over the next four years, the House of Mouse did what it does best and built an entire multimedia universe, giving the audience more and more of the characters that they love, but with storytelling that's about as subtle as Donald Duck in The Three Caballeros. Take the telescope and have a look at what you might call the hot stuff. <laughs> Still, for anyone that wanted more of the Little Blue Gremlin, all of this worked out just fine. Though one unique aspect of Lilo and Stitch's appeal was just how popular the Little Blue Guy ended up being in Japan. Not only did the movie take in an above average percentage of the international box office, but numbers for the 2003 TV series and overall merch sales were through the roof. It's just like Disney said during the opening of Tokyo Disneyland in 1983. So, while the band plays on, Japan's eating it all up like rice. And it was around this time in the mid-2000s that Disney was beginning to look at emerging markets as opportunities, where they could set up shop, develop content for that specific audience, and maybe even localize it back to the West. So while Disney India was getting ready to attempt to sprinkle their pixie dust all over Bollywood... Check this out, then. The school of love, baby. Get out of here! I already told you, you don't get your own video! Sorry, so while Disney was getting invested in the region, it was impossible for them not to notice just how popular Japanese series like Dragon Ball Z and Pokemon had become in the West, and you'd better believe that they wanted a piece of that action. Disney's first experiment with this was in 2006, when they partnered with Toei Animation on a series of shorts titled Robo DZ. But it was in 2008 that they went all in on this model, announcing a partnership with Japanese animation studio Madhouse to produce the spin off series Stitch. Oh, <laughs> 
Now, Madhouse was well known in its own right, having produced numerous acclaimed shows, OVAs, and films, including Aim for the Ace, Ninja Scroll, and Death Note. But in the 90s, the studio had also began seeking out collaborations and commissions from non-Japanese productions. And so all of a sudden, Western audiences started to see Madhouse animation pop up on Saturday mornings, premium paid cable, and even Marvel superhero DVDs. All of this to say that the timing was right for both companies to make a play at something bigger and unexpected. Stitch debuted in October of 2008 on TV Tokyo and Disney Channel Japan, with more than a few seismic changes from the original Lilo and Stitch. For one, Lilo is completely out of the picture and replaced with a brand new character named Yuna. Why isn't Lilo here? Where's she gone to? What about all that Ohana talk? We'll get to that. Ohana means family. Family means nobody, nobody gets, gets left, left behind. behind. The setting of Hawaii is also out the window, with this series taking place on the fictional island of Izayoi, directly off the coast of Okinawa. And while all of these switch-ups may on the surface seem off-putting to hardcore fans that feel like you can't have Stitch without Lilo, Hawaii, and Oana, there are at least some familiar faces to keep the anime series grounded. We learn that an older Lilo has been spending more time with a boyfriend. Lots more on that later. But this lack of attention has made Stitch return to his destructive ways. And so he's back on the run from the Galactic Federation, Jumba, and the trio of Gantu, Rubin, and Hamsterville. Jumba is able to catch Stitch, but then manages to get both of them trapped inside of a black hole. This big black hole could carry us anywhere in time or space. Even alternate universe. Six or six. And while we soon find out that Stitch crash lands off the coast of Okinawa, we later learn that Jumba has crashed onto an asteroid with yet another familiar face. One little fender bender and I'm stranded forever on an empty rock. Hello? Hmm? <laughs> Blakely? I must be hallucinating. That asteroid looks just like Jumba. Back on Earth, we're introduced to Yuna, basically the Lilo of the Japanese Stitch series. Her mother is presumably out of the picture, and so, with her father working out of town, she's staying with Grandma. Much like Lilo was all about hula dancing, Yuna is very much into karate, but this time she's actually taken over and is running her grandfather's old dojo. Hey, that's not bad for your first time. I hereby make you an official student of this dojo, Stitch. <laughs> We're also introduced to yet another mean group of kids. While Lilo mostly had to put up with the occasionally nasty comment, the kids here definitely lean more into the aggressive bully camp. I'll say it one last time. Apologize now. Also more aggressive is the introduction that Yuna has with Stitch. Rather than the cute, cuddly puppy love on display in the original movie, here we pretty much have an all-out brawl. You're under arrest. Don't move. Arrest? Yeah, that's right. Naga arrest! Naga arrest! In the aftermath of all this chaos, though, the two end up caught in a storm and have to seek shelter overnight, which all just leads to them bonding over Yuna's fear of thunder. Don't worry, I'll protect you. Stitch take care of Yuna. And really, the whole bonding here between these two is pretty much instantaneous, and kind of feels like a slapdash way of getting Yuna into that Lilo role, but it gets the job done. I know! We can tell people he's a stray dog we found in the forest! Sure, <laughs> why not? Ichiriba Chode. Yahoo! Did you hear that? She said Ichiriba Chode, which means meet one's cousins forever! Same as Ohana! And finally, the last little bit of setup that the pilot provides is an introduction to the spiritual stone and the important role that it plays for most of the series. Grandma always says that many mysterious creatures from all over the universe come to this stone so they can receive its mystical powers. Nika Amataka mystical powers! I see. 
see you felt the power of the spiritual stone. Grandma! Using the unlimited power of the Chitama forest, the stone can make any creature's greatest wish come true. <laughs> unlimited power! Herbertifa! I would be a good ruler of the universe. <laughs> but if you want this stone to help you, you need to show it you are worthy by doing good deeds. Good deeds? Mm -hmm. If you do good deeds, the spiritual stone will make your wishes come true. Okitaka, then I will stay here with you. Do you really mean it? Protect you not do good deeds become all powerful. <laughs> In that case, I'm gonna help you be good. And with that, we're given the basic setup for the first two seasons. Do a whole lot of good deeds, 43 to be exact, while keeping Yuna safe. Compared to the US Lilo and Stitch TV show, where the entire setup revolved around collecting the various experiments that had been scattered around the island, this one's definitely more simplistic. It does, however, give a whole lot of flexibility in terms of where each episode can go. Sometimes it's an episode about mischievous forest spirits that cause trouble. Okay, Tachichu, time to keep your promise. Give Kijimuna his house back. <laughs> I don't remember promising him that. What? But you promised us! Miga nala Krista! I don't care! Your attitude is ugly! And so is your butt. How dare you! In another episode, Stitch has to help Santa Claus distribute presents after saving the island's children from Hamsterveal. Stitch, this is Teensy, your reindeer partner for tonight. We even get a brief return of Angel, Stitch's crush from the US TV series, who's since become some kind of worldwide singing sensation. It's not clear exactly how she knows that everyone is living in Japan, but she's very jealous of Yuna. <laughs> By the time we hit the second season, the setups for Stitch and his good deeds are just completely out there. We get an episode with Dracula Jr. sneaking out of his coffin on Halloween night in search of candy. Give me some! And of course, you can't have that Dracula cameo without also including Frankenstein and the Wolfman. And what are you supposed to be? There are episodes having to do with pirates, evil spirits, and visiting Tokyo Disneyland, which has a whole lot of meta humor. Good thing he's not programmed for neatness. It's easier said than done. Hmm? my cousin Stitch. And even wraps up with a final confrontation that takes place throughout Big Thunder Mountain. The Disneyland Railroad. <laughs> and Space Mountain. Look, a spaceship. Let's steal it. You can fly it, right? No problem. And if you liked that episode, don't forget to... Hurry and call and live the fantasy at a Disney resort for as little as $84 a night. Season 2 wraps up with an all-out space war, where the Grand Councilwoman recruits Stitch to help the Federation fight the evil Experiment Zero in their cyborg army. A cyborg army led by a ruthless warlord is threatening the existence of the Galactic Federation. Thus far, our forces have been unable to stop him. But with your powers and, shall we say, unconventional way of thinking, you might succeed where we have failed. Frankly, you're the only hope we have left, Stitch. It's a wild change of pace for an episode that, in just a few minutes, transitions from... Look at me doing chores and loving it. <laughs> ...to... After some good old-fashioned combat, Stitch does the ultimate good deed and is able to save the day. Come back! It make it? This just so happens to fully set his good deed counter to zero, which means he can now get that wish from the island spirit stone. What exactly does Stitch wish for? 
Is it that almighty ruler of the universe power he was thinking about in episode one? Of course not. He instead just wishes to be reunited with Yuna back on the island, and that's it. 50 plus episodes of good deed collecting all lead to this. Is it surprising? No. Is it predictable? Yes. Could Disney and Madhouse have done something, anything more interesting? Of course they could have. It all feels rushed and anticlimactic, which is really too bad since season two is a pretty substantial step up from what season one gave us. We're given more fun and creative stories with a sprinkling of some much needed character depth. They all came. Quickly, your fashion sense is awful. Your cooking is so bad, it tastes like warmed up garbage. Without constant nagging, I will make great strides in evil research. <laughs> we, 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 we all hate you as, as much as we hate your, your sweaters. My friend. Well now, wasn't that filled with irony? And if this is where the series had ended, it would have been all well and good. But it turns out that the first two seasons of Stitch did really, really well in Japan. And so Disney did what Disney does best and tried to keep the gravy train rolling. The thing was, Madhouse already had a full slate of other projects on their hands. So Disney had to quickly pivot to Shine Animation as the primary production studio. Well known for their seemingly endless Doraemon animated TV series, movies, and shorts, Shine slots in pretty seamlessly here and is able to retain the look of the previous seasons while still adding their own personal flair. Which is to say, everything continues to lean slightly more anime inspired. Debuting in July of 2010 as a sort of soft reboot to the series, Stitch Best Friends Forever mixed up a lot of the elements that we've come to expect so far. Gone is the mystical serenity of Izayoi Island, and in its place is the hustle and bustle of Newtown, which brings new friends and new adventures. But we also finally get some resolution as to what exactly happened to Lilo, and it's pretty emotional. Episode 1 starts off with Stitch and Yuna having moved to the big city with her cousin Tiger Lily, who was introduced midway through the second season. What's up? Why so sad? Oh, Tiger Lily's moving to the main island and Grandma wants me to go with her. But I don't want to go. It means leaving my home and everybody. Yuna, where are Hannah? Huh? That means where you go, I'll go. Forever. <laughs> yeah. Forever. And we see that Joomba and Pleakley are also along for the ride. Yuna's attending a new school, which of course means a whole new social dynamic. We also see that Hamster Veal, Gantu, and Ruben are all still around, but they're now taking orders from some kind of long-eared creature named Delia who's interested in Stitch's power core. In order to catch him, they once again feel like their best bet is to deploy past experiments to cause havoc around the school and frame Stitch as the cause. Look what her little monster did! This time it's not my fault! The Grand Councilwoman gives the crew a heads up that this mysterious Delia character has in fact stolen all of the experiments that the Galactic Federation had been keeping an eye on. I suggest you keep your eyes open and be ready for trouble. <gasps> I mean, okay. Who's this Delia she mentioned? Imagine the most evil thing that has ever existed! Multiply that by 50! And that's the setup, which is basically a mix of borrowed concepts from the US TV show and what we've already seen with the Japanese series. Many of the early episodes revolve around getting to know the other stereotypical student archetypes at Yuna's school. There's the obnoxious popular girl that's into the jock that Yuna has a crush on. He's got a pair of high-achieving twin sisters that cause all sorts of problems in one episode. <laughs> Hope we're not interrupting anything. Don't stop on our account, Coach Matsuda. Oh, please. I'd stop breathing if you asked me. There's the strange unpopular girl who's hyper competitive with the other bookworms from a nearby school, but still befriends Yuna. So we meet again, Dolores. Hmm? Hello, Lionel. You remembered. Who's he? Lionel Nerdlinger, IQ 165, representing Clever Prep. I was hoping our paths would cross again, Dolores. Hm. 
And outside of these social dynamic episodes, we get another theme park adventure where Hamsterville builds a place that grants wishes to its guests. But he's really just using one of Jumba's experiments to take control of all of the children that visit the park. There's a two-part episode that has Stitch and the crew traveling back in time and learning that the newly introduced Delia is actually an important part of Jumba's past. And then there's the episode that we've pretty much all been waiting all series for. You know, the one where we learn what actually happened to Lilo. While rushing off to school, Stitch thinks he sees Lilo on some random bus, but it's explained to him that this just isn't possible. But it's been years since we've seen her. She'd have to be a fully grown human woman by now, wouldn't she? Despite all this, Stitch still decides to investigate further, and it turns out that, yeah, this sure does seem like it's Lilo. Stitch? Uh, is that Stitch? <gasps> While they recreate all the fun that they used to have together, Yuna, and by extension we, finally get a heads up of what actually went down between these two. Time passed as it does in this dimension, and the day came when they had to part. Lilo went away to school, and the little monster was given a mission by the Galactic Alliance. See you, Stitch. In four years, right here, okay? But four years later, when he returned to that spot for their rendezvous, she was nowhere to be found. Of course, this still doesn't explain why Stitch was seeing the younger version of Lilo earlier in the episode. But things are made a bit more clear when Yuna, Stitch, and this little Lilo run into a certain someone. Ah, where do you think you're going, young lady? If we don't get moving, we'll miss the plane. Stitch is in trouble and he needs our help. Did you say Stitch? Yeah! You and your imagination. Wait, her mom is Lilo? Come on, Mom, don't you want to see him? I know why you dream these things up. It's all the stories I've told you about him. Even if he were here, I wouldn't want to see him. Not today. Stitch, go after them! You heard her. She doesn't want to see me. Oh, no, she was just saying that. She doesn't really mean it. Are you okay with never seeing her again? It's a strange choice, especially after everything that both Lilo and Stitch have been through. And I wish I could say that this kind of bait and switch wraps things up between these two in a really truly meaningful way, but that would only be half true. Lilo! Hmm? Lilo! Mom, look at he's here! <gasps> oh. <sighs> it is you. I'm sorry, Stitch. I meant to meet you there on the beach, but my sister Nani was having a baby and I couldn't get away. I didn't forget. By the time I got there, it was too late. <laughs> I'm here! <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> See, I've kept it all this time. Is this satisfying? No way. I mean, this franchise has spent four films, two seasons of the original series, and countless books and games and theme park attractions, hammering home the importance of Ohana, of togetherness, of being there for one another. But somehow, all of that unravels when Lilo gets delayed with Nani having a baby? Like she couldn't send him an email, or he couldn't give her a call from his big high-tech spaceship? Did they not exchange contact info? Did they not want to FaceTime or something? As soon as we see who we think is Lilo holding her doll from the first film, it's hard not to get your hopes up. And then we get the surprise reveal that it's actually Lilo's daughter, and that Lilo is a grown-ass adult, and it really does feel like this episode is gonna go somewhere special. And then it just kind of doesn't, which is the biggest issue with the entire series. It introduces a whole bunch of new elements, many of them interesting, and then doesn't pay off on them in a way that feels satisfying or different from what we've already seen. The end of season three, which is also the end of the series, is another example of this. We have a whole season of the newly introduced Delia and her quest to take down Stitch. And while she is able to finally get her hands on a power core, the finale ends up just being a battle with another evil experiment. Stitch is able to overcome the odds with the help of his friends, and the bad guys all end up back in prison, an ending we've seen in the US series and even in season one of this very anime. 
And I get it. This is a Disney animated TV show aimed for kids. It's often complete over the top silliness in a way that the previous movies and TV series never even attempted. But it also at times shows that it can dig deep into the emotional depths of its characters. There's a heartbreaking episode where Yuna reconnects with the memory of her mother. That's Yuna's mom? We lost her when Yuna was very young. Now they can only be together in Yuna's dreams. episode where an alternate reality Stitch learns the meaning of Ohana by sacrificing himself. And these are great singular episodes, but they're surrounded by so much fluff that it's hard to still be excited watching yet another Experiment of the Week episode. My precious antique collection, no! Now all of this doesn't mean that there isn't fun to be had, and if you're a big fan of Stitch and just want more of the same, then this will probably fit the bill. Now while season 3 is technically the end of the Japanese Stitch series, Disney did hire Shin A Animation to produce two additional post-series specials. And rather than being some kind of epilogue, these specials are really just extended adventures that pack a bigger punch than your standard episode. In Stitch and the Planet of Sand, Stitch and Pleakley get recruited by the Grand Councilwoman into another interplanetary war. Because Stitch must leave Yuna behind, they spend one last day bonding together. But once they're on their way in order to pick up energy reserves while en route to the battle, it turns out that not everything about this war is what it seems. In the second special, titled Stitch Perfect Memory, Yuna accidentally gets captured by an alien while Stitch is away on another mission. The crew must search for her while also assisting a mysterious robot with questionable methods. Both of these are just fine and pretty much exactly what you'd expect them to be. Nothing dramatically different than what we've already seen, but it's fun to get off planet and explore space a bit. But now we get to the question of how can you actually see the Japanese Stitch anime in all of its bizarre glory? Well, that's where things get a bit tricky. Because in the US, it's not on Disney+, Plus, it's not on DVD, importing the Japanese DVDs are insanely expensive, and it never aired on the US Disney Channel. Well, not totally. For whatever reason, the entire international release of the Stitch anime was completely all over the place. And this is even with Disney going through all the trouble of recording both an English and Spanish dub. The series began airing in parts of Asia, Europe, and Australia in late 2009, and continued its expansion into Latin America by mid-2010. And when it came to the United States, the series popped up on Disney XD in October of 2011, but then was mysteriously removed from the network after airing only five episodes. And here we are, almost 13 years later with zero official explanation as to why the series was pulled, and still no official way of watching it. Why would Disney keep Stitch hidden from the US audiences for so long? My best guess is that it all comes down to them wanting to keep the character consistent when it comes to merchandising and marketing. In the United States, Lilo and Hawaii and Ohana are all important parts of the Stitch character, and Disney has spent a ton of time and resources linking these pieces together. As a Lilo and Stitch fan, yeah, it's a strange adjustment to lose most of these elements in the Japanese series. Does this mean that all hope is lost when it comes to an official US release? Possibly not, because there's a live-action Lilo and Stitch remake coming to Disney Plus at some point. Maybe, just maybe, the House of Mouse decides to throw us a bone and release both the live-action remake and the anime at the same time. 
Come on, Disney. Until then, there's still a pretty easy way for you to check it out, and all you need is to pair a Disney Plus subscription with your VPN of choice. I mean, you can also find it in deeper corners of the web, but let's just stick to this method. Once you've used your VPN to connect to a server in Japan, log back into your Disney Plus account, search for Stitch, and there you have it. Now, it is worth noting that this only has the original Japanese audio and subtitles, and the two specials are tacked on at the end of Season 3, but you'll still be able to check it all out, all in HD. And the crazy thing is, Japan isn't the only country to have its own exclusive Stitch series. We still have one more to explore, and this one has its own brand of cultural uniqueness?